Good morning. Welcome back to Huntsville Park Baptist Church as we open God's Word in the midweek here and uh, see what God has in store for us today. Thank you for joining us today. We'll be in the book of Psalms today, uh, Psalms 96. And the lesson today will be, what is your credit score? What is your credit score? Uh, before we begin, I'd like to uh, ask God's blessings upon you and each and every one. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, we're so thankful for your love, for your kindness, your patience that you have with us. I pray, Lord, that you'll just uh, uh, open our hearts, our minds as we open your word. I pray, Lord, that you'll touch us and, Lord, that you'll direct us. I pray, Lord, that you'll put a hedge around us from the things around us. And I pray, Lord, that we give you the things that's due to you today. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. So I want to talk about the credit score a little bit today. Uh, I do know all of us have credit scores here in the world in which we live. In fact, if you go down and uh, to buy a car or, or buy anything, a lot of times they want to know about your credit. And some people's credits are higher than others. And it's been determined by their faithfulness, their stewardship of the money that they have had in the past, what we've done with it, how we paid our bills, how quickly we paid our bills, how when we had a debt, how quickly we paid that debt off. By having a good credit score and a higher credit score, it gives us a little more perks. A lot of times in certain things, you get a better interest rate uh, if you're not such a, a liability to those people loaning money. Uh, a lot of times it's easier to get things. You don't have to have Somebody to co-sign with you. You don't have to have other things. It's you have more at your fingertips. And I think today, as we look at our credit score, what is our credit score today with Jesus? As we look here in the book of Psalms, the focal verse will be today, verse 8. He says, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. I'd like to read it again. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. We need to give the Lord what we owe him, what he's got coming to him. How much do we owe God today? And are we faithful and good stewards in what we owe him? So he tells us in the latter part of that verse, and come into his courts. Bring your offerings and come into the courts. We need to be bringing them to the Lord. I'm ashamed sometimes at our unfaithfulness. But yet we seem to think that God is just going to forgive all our debts. He's given us our debts. But now we have a requirement to praise him and honor him. So I'd like to look at the 96th Psalm. He began in the first three verses. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathens, his wonders among all people. So here three times in these first few verses, he tells us to sing. And not just to sing, but sing a new song. Something that's new and a new experience and new uh, ideals of what God has done for us day to day. You know, you can make your first three car payments and fail to make the fourth. And when they come and done you, why haven't you paid your fourth payment? You can say, well, I paid the first three. Well, we may have sung to the Lord before, but today's a new day. We must be singing to the Lord. We should be given new experiences of what he's done for us. I love the song, Victory in Jesus. From his, uh, the song book, it says, I've heard an old, old story. How a Savior came from glory. How he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won 
the victory. Oh, isn't it wonderful to have victory? And we need to sing to him. And the people around us need to hear our voices giving God his due. Our children need to see us giving God his due. Our grandchildren need to see us giving God his due with our voices singing. We may say that we can't sing very well, but we owe it to him to sing to him, to praise him about the experiences, about the crises that we've come through because he got us through those things. Of the sins he's forgiven us for, it's our job and it's due the Lord to sing to him. He says also, not only in sing, it says in the praise in verse four, and the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. The God in which we owe is not a wooden statue or a metal uh, totem pole or anything else that people may worship idols that this old world has. The God in which we worship and praise is one that created all things. He created this world. He created me. He created my family. He created my everything. He is a creator. He is not an idol. He's above all other things. He's not like earthly politicians where they come, they go. God is in control all the time. He was here before me. He's here with me. He'll be here after me. He's forever. He is our creator and he should be praised. If we're not praising him, we're not paying our debt because everything that, that has voice should praise him. He said, even the rocks could cry out. I believe the streams cry out. All creation must praise him. If we're not praising him, I'd have to say our, our credit scores are going down rather than going up. And as our credit scores are, go, are going down, uh, our abilities and our freedoms and so much that we may have had at one time is leaving us. He says, sing, praise, and then in verse 7 he talks about worship. And worship's about giving. And it says this, verse 7, Give unto the Lord all you kindred of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring the offering and come into his courts. Oh, worship the Lord in beauty of holiness, fear before him, all the earth. A lot of people seem to think a church is after people's money. We're not after people's money, but if we're going to have a good credit with God, we must be giving, giving of ourself, of our strength, of our mind, of, of our attention, Everything should be given to the Lord. That's due him. Uh, can I put a price tag on what I owe the Lord? I owe him everything. We should be giving to the Lord. All the people should be giving to the Lord because we owe it to him. He said, as we give to the Lord, there's a way we should give. We should give in holiness. We should give in clean hands as we give to the Lord. The, the priest, when they would go in to give the sacrifices, it was God give them expectations that he had of what they were to wear, how they were supposed to wash and clean, and how that they were supposed to come in, in a certain time, in a certain way, in a certain dress. He does that to you and I as well. We can't come to the, uh, to the Lord and, and worship the Lord with unclean hands. We must have clean hands. 
We must repent of our sins in order to worship the Lord. We can't harbor sin in our hearts. We must forgive in order to worship the Lord. If we're not worshiping the Lord, our credit score is being affected. Coming to his house, oh, what joy it is to be able to stand here in his sanctuary and worship him. What a joy it is to be able to come into the house of the Lord and give of our, our, ourselves and give of the things that he's blessed us with. We do that to pay our debt. I know some people said, said, well, that bank has more money. They don't need more money. But it's our job. If we owe it, we should pay it. We owe the Lord. We pay our debts through worshiping him. And lastly, it tells us here in verse 10, it says, Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth, the world uh, shall also be established, and that it shall not be moved. It shall judge the people righteously. He shall judge the people righteously. Let the heavens rejoice, and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar, and the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful, and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice before the Lord, for he cometh. For he cometh in judgment to the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. God is sending his son. We can rejoice that the king is coming. The king is coming. Uh, let me tell you, when he comes, everything is going to be made righteous. When he comes, he's going to find those that uh, our credit is not what it ought to be. When where our score for our credit is not what it ought to be. Only then will this earth, when he comes, will be made righteous. Some seems, seems to think that if we vote one way, it's going to make this world righteous. If we vote the other way, it would be better. But let me say this. When the king comes, that's when the earth was going to find righteousness. That's when he's going to wipe away all the things that doesn't belong. I like what he says in Romans. For I, be I, I reckon that the suffering of this present times are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed unto us when he comes. How wonderful it's going to be. So we sing, we praise, we worship and we rejoice that he's coming. I think we must ask ourselves, what is our credit score today? Are we good stewards with what he has given us? Let us pray. Dear Lord, I pray today as we evaluate ourselves, Lord, you already know our faithfulness, our shortcomings. But I pray that today that we make efforts to better ourselves to worship you, to give to you the things that's due to you. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask. Amen.